Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard or my back garden for you Brits. <laughs> that thing back there is my wide cutting bandsaw mill, which I designed and built right here in my backyard. I'll leave a link to that if you want to see the whole build process to build one of those things. And today we're continuing on with our cherry and walnut logs. Last time we cut the base sections of both of these, uh, this log and the next log which we'll cut. And those are cut into boards. These two logs have a lot more limbs and kind of goofy things going on with them, especially this cherry log, which I'm sitting on, that has this nice crotch up here. I want to turn this log as well as the other uh, two walnut logs into slabs. That should give uh, me a lot more options in the future as far as what I want to do with these things. If I want to use the crotch section of this log later on and resaw it into panels, for instance, like on the sideboard I'm building right now out of walnut, I was able to resaw panels to create all six kind of individual panels from the left all the way around to the right side of the case out of just two slabs. So it's a little bit of a contrast to the last one. We were sawing boards, a little more labor intensive as far as the sawing goes. Slabbing logs like this pretty quick because you make your cuts and you really don't have to be moving stuff around all that much. So first let's take a look at this log which I've all set up ready to saw and then we'll get into some cutting. <laughs> So the first thing I'll notice about this is this has a bit of a bulge here on this side before we get into the crotch limbs. You can see the log was kind of curving up in that direction. So I have this area here, which I can saw into some, I guess, crotchless boards or shorter than the total length of the log. So I'm debating whether or not I'm gonna cut this into a couple of four quarter boards to go with the boards we cut last time, or I cut one big slab. I think I'm gonna make the first cut up through here and see what it kind of looks like. And orienting the log this way, of course, exposes all the crotch figure because we're cutting parallel to the crotch, which will give us a nice crotch figure coming down through here where the two limbs up here meet in the middle of the tree. I did have to raise this side of the log up a little bit to get this first area nice and even. So I've got this thing up about an inch and a half off the bed down here at this end, which kind of levels out that top cut. So I'm not making a big taper off cut. When I roll this thing over, most of the waste is gonna be coming across here and cutting these limbs off, this little wedge piece down here. Now on the base log, we did find out that there was a decent amount of rot in there. And I'm guessing that might've been from where this kind of limb thing used to be, because if we come around to the back side of the log, we can see there is some rot kind of forming down here. This is all dry rot all through here. So the slabs might not be that great towards the bottom there. They might not be that great at all. That's just part of cutting logs, I guess. But hopefully the part that I actually really care about, the crotch section is still in good shape. And just judging by what I see down here, it looks pretty good. This side looks a little iffy. There is a little bit of kind of deterioration there, but again, we'll see. So nothing too exciting to point out at this time. So let's get that first cut made. Oh, yeah. I love sawing cherry, it smells so good. <laughs> so I think I'll, I should be able to pull uh, three boards off, this one and then two more and then we'll be into some slabs, but this stuff is just beautiful. Some beautiful, beautiful color in here. I think what these ones will become is just live edge boards. I won't worry about actually edging them. But they'll be able to be stacked with the other four quarter boards really easily. So let's take a look and see what we're dealing with here. A little rusty today. There you go. Check this out. Isn't that some nice color? Really nice. Getting up to here is where it gets interesting. You start to see some of the figure coming through from the crotch. So you got this little bit of figure coming up through here, which is just gonna get more and more intense the further down to the log we actually get. Looking like on this side we have some stainings, so this probably has some rot somewhere maybe above it in a, in a limb up here or something like that. But this darker color is more indicative of some rot. Got an old limb right there. The tree lost a limb and grew around it to heal, which is cool to see. Some interesting gum pockets through here. 
So those black lines are. I love cherry. It's one of my favorite species to saw and use. Oh, yes. Oh, man, that's nice. This make some nice boards. This is going to make some nice stuff. What I really like about this is that the grain is almost like rectangular. So if you come through here, the grain just arcs back around and comes straight back down again. And that is just such a cool look. I'm really excited about this stuff. There is this kind of split, kind of weird... I don't know what that is coming through here, but it is a crack and it runs the whole entire length of that, of that uh, board there. So we'll see how deep that actually goes. But this surface now, this flat surface I just cut, is going to be the bottom side of the last slab. Because at this point, I think what I'll do is roll this thing over and start cutting it into slabs. So now I can set the saw the right height off the bed so that as I cut down I get even boards and I'm thinking for these since it's not super wide I'm gonna cut these at eight quarter so I'll be a thick eight quarter about two and an eighth inches thick so since I don't have an eight quarter scale for my mill I need to go off of the tape and figure out how much I have to move the saw head each time for a two and an eighth inch thick board so I do that in increments of two and a quarter inches so that's two and an eighth for the desired finished cut plus an eighth for the kerf of the blade, which is actually more than the kerf of the blade by a little bit. The blade kerf is 0.1 inches, and of course an eighth of an inch is 0.125. This is gonna leave me with a board slightly thicker than uh, two and an eighth inches thick, which is all right in my book. So all I do is just kind of enter the increments in there, find the closest one to start with, and then I just subtract two and a quarter every single time I can cut. things out of here and take a look at them. <sighs> this one's a little small, but still some good stuff in there it looks like. No, uh, no crazy rod or any kind of really big defects or anything, voids, things like that. That looks pretty good. 
see what this guy's got going on. Just kidding, it's not that bad. I don't need to grunt today. Don't need the extra strength. So that is where all that rot came from. This limb right here, it looks like. Maybe this one too. And this little limb here. So I guess all the limbs over the years kind of produce a little bit of rot, but this one was the biggest. Crotch figure starting to show though. That's nice. Always nice to see that. Grab another one here. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah, that's amazing. Wait till you see this one. There's some nice crotch figure on this. These two book match slabs, this one and the next one off of here, they're gonna have the most crotch figure and it's a pretty decent amount. The last one's got some crotch figure as well. That's nice too. Got my water. Let's see what we got here. Check out the color in this. The one thing I like about cherry where it has some rot standing or there's some rot somewhere in the log near it is you get a much more red color out of the wood because it is stained, but it's not actually rotten. It just has the color characteristics of dry rot, which is really cool. So a little bit of crotch figure in this first one. Not a whole lot, but you're starting to see it kind of poking through there. But as we go on to the next guy, we start to see some more serious crotch figure there. And then up the rest of the slab. Got a little bit of rot here and there around some of the knots. And then there's the, the bigger one, which kind of let a lot of the rot down into the lower log. This guy is the good one. That's got some more significant crotch figure in it. Really, really nice feather there. Looks pretty cool. Got a little spalting here too through here, so we've got a little spalt here and there, all that black stuff there is all spalting. Up through here, got some more of that rot infiltration. So another one of those big limbs, let a lot of rot kind of coming down here into the main trunk of the tree and instead of down to the other log, which we just cut last time. A lot of cool color though. This guy, before I put water on it, I want to show you the dry rot. So you can really see when it's actually dry like this, that all of this through here is all dry rot. So it's got kind of a grayish yellow kind of color to it. You can see this white stuff forming through here. That's all fungi. So it's actually rotting through here, but that's okay. <laughs> if we want to use that as is, we can always stabilize it. Otherwise you can cut around it and all the stuff on this side is perfect. It's actually pretty close to quarter sawn or right around there. You got some really nice straight grain stock there and it's just gorgeous. Then you of course have this nice bit of crotch feather up here. So let's take a look at this guy next. Splish splash and whatnot. That was a good one. Oh, missed a spot. Oop. So this face on this one will be the book match of the nice one which is put away. So it's pretty much exactly the same as that last one. There's that rot now that we have some water on there. Still pretty cool though. You can see how so the crotch figure rots a little bit. So you can see this kind of ripple coming through here. That was the crotch figure, but that's all rotten now. <laughs> and back down here, there's those few little bits of spalting next to that nice crotch figure right through there. So then the bottom side of this one is actually the top side of this one here. So you can see there's that kind of split thing up through here. You can see some more of that white fungi stuff. Some really nice color though. And we got a nice burst of crotch figure down here as well, which is always nice. So let me get these ones stacked and out of here and then we can move on.
All right, we are all set for some water tossing. Let's see what these things look like. You can already see like how green they are because they're just cut again. But look at the purple up here where it's actually had some time to dry. That's where his limb was torn off. You can see the purple starting to kind of color shift down a little bit through here. So that's the dry color. This the green is the fresh milled color. So I'm actually kind of surprised how clear these are. There's not a whole lot of super crazy stuff, especially towards the middle of the log. This is a uh, quarter sawn right through here. So this is nice quarter sawn walnut. So some really nice, actually really nice straight green stuff through here, which is really nice. Got some sprinkling of crotch figures throughout the slabs. So there is a bit of crotch right there. And then there's the actual limb it came from. So a little bit of crotch figure right through there. And then you get some figure around the knots as you go up to the top of the log. With some really interesting knots with some figure around them like this guy right here. As we get towards the top where we get kind of the limbs that I was trying to kind of split in half, you get some crotch figure coming in from here and from there. So a little bit of double crotch action on this guy, but the, the center area here coming up, that's just a really cool look. Something about that just looks really interesting to me. Okay. <laughs> the next uh, three, let's take a look at those. So I just used these slabs to help clamp down the, uh, the other boards that are on the mill right now. That was the last cut off of that uh, cant that we did last time. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link to that. That was like the first part of this kind of series thing. So let's take a look at uh, what these guys look like. Get more water. There. These are beautiful. That's just incredible. So starting with the crotchiest one, this is probably going to be eh, probably the best one. It's got the most amount of crotch figure here. This is exactly what I was going for with splitting that crotch uh, through both of these limbs. So I exposed crotch figure from both limbs. So success there. <laughs> But man, it's just crazy how clear this is through the center here. Not a whole lot going on. We got a little pack of knots right there. But coming down through here until we get to this other limb down here, that's some nice straight green stuff right there. Beautiful. As we get towards the outside of the log, things get a little bit uh, crazier. Start getting a lot more of those bullseye type knots as we get closer to the outside of the log where those limbs actually lived. We got that big old bullseye up there because there's that limb that was coming out straight down that way into the ground from this orientation. Overall though, I'm quite pleased with this. <laughs> so next real quick, I'm gonna grab that smaller section of log, that uh, mostly crotch section, and get that thing up onto the mill and get it sliced up. With this one, I'm mostly looking to expose the crotch figure from the upper two limbs. That should give me a little bit of interesting figure and that'll give us some nice fun looking crotch slabs. <laughs> so with this thing being as small as it is, it should be pretty easy to just get it up there and get slicing. All right, let's take a look. Super green. <laughs> that is some beautiful crotch figure though. So I think the beauty in these ones can kind of speak for themselves. Got some really nice crotch feather coming down through here. That's probably about 18 inches of crotch, which is uh, pretty darn nice. You see, this is towards the center of that crotch area. You have the most amount of figures through there, and it's just absolutely just beautiful. Can't wait to do something with these. Don't know what, but uh, something. So that's an overview of the slab cutting process. And as you can see, the slab cutting process versus the board cutting process is a lot less labor intensive as far as, I guess, 
set up time before making your actual product. So with the board sawing, you're cutting a bunch of like off cuts off of a log until you get a cant, and then you start cutting your project, your product. With cutting slabs, you really only make a facing cut, roll the thing over so it's stable if you need to, unless the log is big enough to be stable on its own, then you just slice down to the bed. So it is a lot less, uh, lot less work in the beginning as far as getting the log actually ready to be cut into the final product, which is the slabs. And the other thing with cutting slabs is once you make your initial cut, you're kind of locked into that cut orientation. You're going to cut that way through the log. You're not going to be able to kind of flip around and cut from whatever side you want like you are when you're cutting boards. So that's something to consider as well. Now kind of reflecting back on what we talked about at the end of the last video about edging. If you are actually doing board production, you're probably doing a whole lot of actually edging with the saw itself. You have a separate edger for that. So the whole work ahead of time might not be that big, but if you're planning on using a saw to do the edging, you can really see how the time savings as far as time on the saw is a lot, um, a lot better when you're cutting slabs than cutting boards. And then generally the methodology is a little bit different when cutting slabs because you're really trying to cut things that are interesting and unique. So you want to expose all the interesting characteristics of the grain in the log, maybe expose an interesting shape in the log, things like that versus when you're cutting boards, and especially if you're sawing for grade, you don't really want any of this weird stuff in your boards. You want things to be as uniform as possible, so there's a little bit of difference there. So that does it for part two of the series. Next time we're going to take a look at the rest of the process because this is just the beginning. There's a whole lot more that goes into producing lumber than just what you see as far as cutting on the mill goes. So we'll cover disposal of all the waste, so all the offcuts and all the sawdust. We'll also cover stacking and drawing and how that's a little bit different with slabs versus boards and uh, bring things right around to a finished dried product. So that should be pretty sweet. <laughs> I'll leave you a link to that playlist in case you happen to find this one for whatever reason. That'll give you uh, a quick way to get to part one, which is last time, this video, as well as next time's video about uh, everything else. <laughs> so thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions on sawing boards or slabs or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.